And now, Society Network presents John Arthur Martinez. Well, there's a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle near the cattle guard. A June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle near the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. I am traveling on. And there's a red-headed rider with a radio rare and the windows down. Rocking and a reeling to the rhythm of the country sound. Got his 18 wheeler with his pedal to the metal. Headed for the dillo and the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right, Mr. Dillo in the middle. Swerved to the left, Mr. Puddle in the guard. Next thing. Hey, welcome back. Episode number five of Home Going After Dark from Society Radio. I am honored and once again a lucky man to have uh, one of our local legends, as I call him. Ha! <laughs> John Arthur Martinez back here in the studio of Society Network. John, welcome back. Man, I'm happy to be here. Always, Mel. It's always a pleasure and an honor. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, John, the, the, the first time I met you is when I, I guess I first got into this over at K-Bay. Yes. 103.9 FM uh, Homegrown Hour. And you were the first guest on that. So I wanted to have you on the first guest on this, but because, uh, you know, most people when they see the bear after they'll figure out we shoot green screen. So I wanted to make sure that we got it right before I brought you in here. Nope, uh, man, I'm happy to do it at any time, so okay. no, problem. no problem. Like I told you, I'm always happy to talk music and always happy to play music. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so John, what what have you been up to uh, since the, uh, I guess, you know, year and a half ago when we were at K-Bay? I mean, what, well, what's been going on? I had a tour of Europe planned for 2020. And surely, the, uh, one by one, they all started canceling uh, when uh, it was, I was going to fly into northern Italy. And, and at that time, uh, you might recall, northern Italy was, was really hit hard by... Was ravaged by the COVID. Yeah. And just north of that, uh, in the border, of, uh, uh, is the Italian part of Switzerland. So Swiss, the Swiss show started uh, canceling. And uh, pretty soon the whole thing canceled. And so uh, it's rescheduled for 2021. Uh, but I'm not quite sure uh, how whether it will materialize or not. We're just keeping it, uh, you know, week to week. And, and I'll, I'll announce to the fans whether it goes. But uh, we have what we had scheduled and what we've rescheduled are shows beginning in Barcelona, Spain, uh, going into Switzerland, Austria, and Germany, and then coming back home through France, and that's uh, that's the the tour that we had booked for 2020. That is, right now, uh, tentatively scheduled for 2021 uh, in May and June. So I hope we can pull it off still. So, John, when you talk about like the European tour, you know, I remember reading when, uh, and unfortunately, when you did have to post that you canceled it. You yes, know what I mean, everybody was on there. It's like, oh, no way. You know what I mean? Whether you're a fan or not, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a fan of yours, but it doesn't matter. I mean, do you do the booking for those shows yourself? Well, there's a lady that speaks several languages in, uh, in Switzerland, and she's been, been booking each show. I think she's booked me 13 tours over there. So, wow. Uh, okay. Almost one for each of the previous albums. This would have been the 14th tour to coincide with the 14th album. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen, but, but, uh, her name is Irene Schmidt Irene and she Schmidt. has, uh, I S music, you know, her initials, Irene Schmidt, and she's based out of Brunnen, uh, Switzerland, which is near Lake Lucerne. It's a real beautiful part of, of the world. Amazing. Of course, all of Switzerland is you, you know, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll stick the iPhone out the window and just shoot. Kept, and, and everybody goes, uh, boy, what kind of camera did you shoot? I said, man, in Switzerland, everything's a postcard. You can just close your eyes and, and, uh, and hit the button. And, and it's, it, it's just amazing. It, yes, sir, it is. So you said this would be your 15th tour over there. Last time, when I interviewed you over at KBA, I know we touched on the European thing in, in that interview. And uh, Well, uh, it would have been my 14th in 2020. And the, so the 14th tour, it was rescheduled for 2021. So I'm still, I'm still, I have still have not done the 14th. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, it'll be my 15th album that I'm recording. Uh, so I might have two, two albums to push when I go to, to Europe because, you know, the, for the love of Western swing was the one I was pushing whenever I was, uh, everything was canceled. 
oh, okay. And so now you're getting ready to cut another one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I had Nathan Quindies, you know, uh, my, my partner on the Great Marble Falls Live Music Society. Yes. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, when you're talking about this is now my second album, you know, I was still st- stuck on, you know, for the love of Texas swing. And now you're on way to completing another album. Yeah. In fact, I'm doing uh today's show. I'm doing two songs off the next album. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Because Nathan does something similar. You know what I mean? It's just like pumping them out. I'm like, my God, you know what I mean? I need to go back and practice some more. So uh, that's, that's so awesome. Um, so are you using the same musicians that you used on for the love of Texas swing? Uh, or I, I always uh, change it up a little bit, but uh, some of those great players almost always make it on the record. You know, I'm still touring regularly with with uh, Kurt Balmer, the fellow who uh, plays fiddle and Absolutely. was part of uh, uh, Lone Star, and uh, and Luis Coutinho de Souza. He's uh, the Brazilian percussionist. It kind of gives it a nice flavor when you have that Latin flavor mixed with that that pure country fiddle. So, uh, so, you know, and then, uh, of course I'll, I'll surround myself with the best players possible. Yeah, you do. I, I, I mean, I know a lot of them. I don't know Kurt, uh, personally. I, I, I'm, I'll be excited when I get to meet him because he can play that fiddle. man. Well, since I've, I've spoken with you last, he's now part of the Hill Country. He decided to, to sell in Cedar Park and he moved out to Lake Buchanan. There you go. So yeah. I was up here. All, that, now it's making sense because y'all yeah. really started playing a lot together versus yeah. what I was seeing before. You yeah. know what I mean? So it makes sense now he's living up here. Yeah, when it comes to Louise, I saw Caleb Rojas the other day. Yeah. You know, we're trying to expand this show to make it better. So yeah. he's one of the guys that I'm actually chasing around wanting to get him in here. Oh, Caleb will do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, so, and, and with, you know, I figure, well, I don't know, maybe you make a cameo on that one. Sure. That, that, that would be pretty cool. You know what I mean? Uh, I try to support everybody. And, uh, you know, uh, Caleb keeps coming around. Yeah. You know? He keeps coming around. Well, he's so. a young guy. He's it's only going to get better. That's this crazy thing about him. It, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, he can kind of sing. Yeah? He, he can. He did some Christmas music for me yeah. uh, back on the, uh, the K-Bay show, his yeah. second one. I thought it was, it was amazing. So, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit. So you, you had to cancel that show because of the, the, the pandemic, okay? Uh, how, you, how have you been keeping yourself busy? I've seen a lot of posts out there. Well, in, in fortunately... Fortunately, there are a lot of wineries in the state of Texas, and most of them are in the Texas Hill Country. So, uh, for instance, this past Sunday, uh, we had a show that was uh, full, uh, but because it was outdoors, you know, there, there's folks that, that can come out. That, uh, and I was at Texas Heritage uh, Vineyards, and they have a patio, and they have a, a, an outdoor uh uh, seating area around the patio so it, you know uh, and then there's uh, private shows like uh, like for instance uh, Lakeway now this get this uh, Lakeway uh, the, well it's officially called the Hills of Lakeway Golf Club they have a stage right next to the 18th green oh that's awesome yeah and so uh, you know the the private events have have kept me alive and Escondido uh, that's, uh, between Horseshoe Bay and Horseshoe Bay West on 2147 on 2147. And it's not part of Horseshoe Bay. It's its own private club. Some of the movers and shakers in Texas are, are members at Escondido. At, at Escondido's. Okay. A- and, and those guys, uh, are always kind to us. So, I mean, so we have those options. Uh, now, of course, a lot of the, bar, you know, the bar gigs, you know, uh, uh, and a lot of the, uh, the smaller venues, you know, they can't afford to have us at this point. They're barely, you know, making ends meet. You know, like the R bar, we haven't quite gotten back to the R bar yet because, you know, she's got to be, you know, she's got to be able to make a profit before she pays us. So yeah, and it's it's uh, been tough on yeah. our, on our uh, venues here in Marble sure. Falls, Texas. You Dear know, Lord, Brass Hall is, you know, used to have music, uh, you know, three or four times a week, and unfortunately. Uh, you know that that came to a screeching halt. So you know I'm hopeful that all these these folks will. Uh, and I tell everybody, you know, go over there and get takeout from from uh, the R Bar or Trailblazer or some of these venues that support me. And uh, and when, by just getting takeout, you're going to make it to where I have a venue to come back to. Uh, that, that's <laughs> you know? right. You know, yeah. uh, I you know I, I guess by you say you know saying that I I haven't been doing a lot of push for Ray's R Bar. You know what I mean? I've been caught in other shows and I had to get out of this terrible 
it was a good show, The Real with Mel Highsmith. It'll come back. I'm revamping it. Yeah. But it just kind of took a little different direction that I was just, and I had, and on that show I didn't want to push a lot of the local businesses because it was um, political based, right? You know what sure. I mean? So I didn't know how everybody felt with that, but you know I'm gonna do my best. So it's Ray's our bar over off Third Street here in Marble Falls, Texas. Well, the only reason I bring up Ray's is because she was hiring me every Wednesday, and uh, <laughs> and you know when uh, when a venue when you lose that. Uh, you know, that's four, occasionally five Wednesdays a month. Uh, I was playing it at Ray's, and, uh, you know, she's not at the point where she can have me back at this point, you know. So, but hopefully, you know, uh, things will start getting better in 2021, and she can have live music again. So. Right. Okay, just so everybody out there in uh, society land, they can just get a, a, a sense. You know, when you were on the K-Bay show, I asked you how many uh, – gigs and show or shows you do a year and you said something like you know 280 or something like that yeah 270 280 has been the average somewhere in there okay so uh, how how has covid affected you being able to on those numbers where are you at now for well beginning? um i'm probably at um uh at least, you know we did have the first few months up until the end of uh, march and then things started uh, opening up again in uh, July. So uh, I have had, uh, yeah, but at least half the income is gone, has been gone. That's so please, yeah. you, you've taken so, a 50, but my dear Yeah, Lord, so, so I told my wife, you know, like, to, uh, like January is usually one of the slower months. So I told my wife, I said, uh, honey, uh, we're going to have to eat all the leftovers uh, this uh, month. And we're going to have, you know, I said, you know, we're going to make sure. And I said, I've got some... Uh, uh, we're, we're redoing the studio and, and, uh, uh, and, but I'm going to barter as much of that as I can, you know, so I've got uh, some flooring Ooh. coming and barter, you know, so anyway, that's just, that's just the way you do it. If you're, if you know, you got to figure out a way to make it work. You, you have to, uh, I'm a firm believer, man, in regards to the situation, you got to remain focused and consistent. Yeah. You know, bottom line, none of us as, as musicians, you're a professional musician. I'm a weekend warrior, you yeah. know? Uh, you know, uh, you're going to adapt a little bit different, but I can tell you what, all the part-timers, the uh, whole pandemic knocked them out. You know, we went from the greater Marble Falls society of, uh, you know, on a course of a, a good month, you'd have 125, 250,000 views of all the people we're sharing. Right. Nice. It, well, it, it crashed it down to about 1000. Wow. Cause everybody stopped playing it once. So there was no content. And once you take the content out of the, Oh yeah, the okay. page, it, it, it that, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. So everybody, if anybody was wondering what happened to the Greater Marble Falls, it crashed, man, like the stock market. I'm telling you, in 2008, it was. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's good. But at least you have something still coming in. You know? Yeah, and uh, uh, because I was a full time musician, and I was a member of the National Academy of Records and uh, Recording Arts and Sciences. That's the people who produce the Grammys. And uh, they gave me a grant, uh, and uh, you know that that helped with one month's uh, uh, loss of wages, mortgage. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I just look at it as that that helped with one mortgage payment. Yeah, you, you yeah, because you're buying your house. That's well, right. yeah, I have yeah. a house, and so uh, and uh, and then there were uh, I, I did a lot of the virtual shows, you know, online, and uh, I had a lot of generous fans, and. Uh, through PayPal, I was able to make maybe another payment or two. Uh, people, you know, uh, what they you do a show, and if they like it, you know, they give you five, they give you ten, and some of these guys are giving you fifty and a hundred, you know. And uh, so I was able to make a few payments from the the, the online just shows. from the virtual. Yeah, yeah. Did it, it, did it, did that virtual uh, or the PayPal and are getting paid through the virtual shows? Did I get infected by so many people flooding it out the way they did? Well. Uh, I have a fan base that's not going to be affected by all the other shows. You know, if I say, if I, you know, the fans that I have out there, if I tell them I'm going to do a show, they're not going to go tune into somebody they don't know. They're going to, they're going to tune into my show. So okay. it did, didn't affect me that much. Okay. Awesome. There were a lot of them though. You know, yeah. you get on Facebook and, and there were, oh, there were like cool. thousands and thousands. It's like, oh gosh, you know, who's that? You know, <laughs> yeah. and some people were doing, you know, multiple times a week and I found it was more effective if you just did it like once a week or once every other week. Yeah. Because then you got more viewers 
and uh and not not yeah. burn not burning out your own fan base as much exactly you know love only goes so far exactly you know I mean, we got to hear the same yeah. stuff over and over again yeah so okay so uh anyways we're gonna uh what what's the first song you're gonna play with us today John? it's called uh three white spanish horses and uh it's a song that is it's based on a lot of uh true moments in my life but it was inspired by a photograph that my sister-in-law sent this she had gone to see us at hondos in fredericksburg texas in late march just before everything shut down and she and her husband decided they were going to take the back roads from fredericksburg back home to san angelo and what they encountered was pretty amazing from their perspective they saw three white horses approaching them on one of these small uh small uh country roads that was probably somewhere between Fredericksburg, Cherry Springs, and or Menard or Mason. They can't even remember which road it was, but they sent me the photo. They said, there's got to be a, a song in this. There's three white horses. They don't, there's no branding marks that they could see on the, uh, on the horses. There was no saddle, no bridles, and there's got to be a song in this. And I thought, so my mind started churning and, uh, I started going back to my, uh, uh, boyhood days in the cotton cotton uh, my grandpa's cotton fields in cedar park texas i mean uh, cedar creek texas excuse me and uh anyway i you i'll share the song with you but uh that's that was the inspiration okay excellent so here you go john arthur martinez singing his original song three white spanish horses three white spanish horses <laughs> I took her out less traveled by a rolling ranch and road. There were no 18 wheelers, there were no heavy loads. Where I waved to a weathered man in a worn out step side truck. It made me smile when he waved back on the freeways, no such luck. We drove through miles of cotton fields, white clouds in the sky. Saw the white streaks in the distance, they barely caught my eye. I pulled onto the shoulder as the ghosts moved into focus. Was it my imagination? Three cotton colored horses. Three white Spanish horses across Comanche lands. Three white Spanish horses untamed with no man's brand. No bridle and no saddle. They were running straight for me. Three white Spanish horses wild and free. This vision led me to a time No cattle guards and fences To a land not yet named Texas When they first came with their horses I could picture open spaces With Comanche riding bareback On the horses they had captured Herds of bison still intact it led me to the cotton field I worked by Grandpa's side. It took me to that white horse that only he could ride. Then I saw the weathered man again. He drove with more conviction. He pulled a two-horse trailer. I soon understood his mission. Three white Spanish horses across Comanche lands. Three white Spanish horses untamed with no man's brand. No bridle and no saddle. They were running straight for me. Three white Spanish horses wild and free. The old man hollered cotton, the lead horse turned his way. The younger horses followed into the open gate. 
They traveled at a horse's trot, cotton followed still unsaddled. As they headed for their homestead in this land of horse and cattle. Three white Spanish horses across Comanche lands. Three white Spanish horses untamed with no man's brand. No bridle and no saddle, they were running straight for me. Three white Spanish horses wild and free. Three white Spanish horses wild and free. Three white Spanish horses wild and free. And we're back. Episode number five of Society Network with John Arthur Martinez. John, that, that song, Three White Spanish Horses, that was, that was absolutely amazing. I know you explained before you started playing it, the, uh, the inspiration behind it. Uh, it was is that on your album the for the love of Texas swing or no that's gonna be on the next album the 15th album that I uh, mentioned you know I have have 14 albums that began um, with uh, an album called on the border uh, you can go to my website if you're uh, interested but jo- go to John Arthur Martinez dot net and you'll see uh, that I have all 14 albums uh, available on a thumb drive now so you can go there and purchase them but it began with on the border and the last one was for the love of western swing the next one i think i'm going to call three white spanish horses uh, i'm not sure yet but i think that's what i'm going to do okay okay so you know I, I didn't ask that as like a pop question to find out it, what album was on that you know what i mean i just i, I wanted to know that's, well i'm glad you did you know that, that's a good thing okay so let's talk a little bit about how you see the, I guess, the, the state of music, and do you think we're going to be able to recover from the devastation of our venues? Well, uh, some of you who uh, are in the Marble Falls or Texas Hill Country area, you might have seen an article recently about uh, some funding that was passed to try to s- save some of those venues, and I, I'm hopeful that as many of them uh, as possible can be saved because man uh texas is texas because not because of all these uh big corporate franchises that you know that mean that you can see in every major city Uh, but texas is texas because of pooties out on 71 because of lukenbach uh lukenbach dance hall because of hondos in fredericksburg because of little places like the arbor or trailblazer and burn it that's why that's what makes Texas so unique. You know, if, even in the, the city of Austin, you know, you, the Broken Spoke, uh, you have uh, the Saxon Pub, you have the Continental Club. You know, all those give, give Austin a really unique uh, uh, personality. Antone's on, on 6th Street. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's because of, of venues like that that, that Texas is so unique. So, yeah, I'm hopeful that we can save as many of them as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry about that phone call. That was oh, actually, no. that was Caleb calling on my phone. You know what I mean? He probably called me back about Luis. So, uh, uh, John, you know, I, I asked that t- question in particular because, you know, a, a lot of the musicians around here are all the ones that know you. They they all look up to you, man. You know what I mean? you got to have a, a the band leader per se, right? And so I asked that question because I knew that you were going to give – a remarkable answer just like that when you started naming off all the venues and that's what it's about you know um because it's 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 wild you know uh candace the bartenders over at brass hall had yeah. come in and talked to me yesterday you hear that is that the f- uh oh it's your phone there we go let me uh <coughs> I just want to make sure that they know that um that I'll uh, oh it's all the business John take care of it no I just want to, uh, I'm not going to take it I'm just going to let them know that I can that uh, they can call me back later uh, but, well hopefully in the future we'll have it up where we're uh, you know we'll do another remodel here in the studio and uh, 
And with, with that remodel, it'll have, you know, remember in K-Bay, you could call in and out the show. Yeah. We already have that ability through my laptop. I just, you know, one step at a time, you know. Well, most of the podcasts uh, folks are doing these days, they, they, they are pre-recorded. So the beauty of that is you can you know, post and repost and share and reshare. So it, so. it, it, it is. Uh, when Nathan had his episode on here, which was the second one, we talked about the, the key to social media. How, how does it work? Because, you know, if anybody's ever wondered, it's like, you're doing it perfect now. I, I see your post. I mean, they're laid out just totally perfect set up where you're going to get the most push within the Facebook algorithm, you know, just on Facebook. It's just use that as an example. And uh, we're telling everybody, you know, it's if, you know, John, if I share something of yours and you see something of mine, if you share them, you cross into each friend's list. And yeah. that's the most important thing. Cross pollinization. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's how you grow the most crops. And we were telling people another way. If someone's going to share your, your content, explain to them that you want them to copy it, the code, you know, when he goes, when you go down there, when you hit share, it gives you all your options. Just go down to copy, copy that and then have them copy that in their feed. And it gives them, you know, probably about 10 times the exposure out. The algorithm recognizes it was copied from another site instead of shared directly. And if that makes sense. Wow. I didn't realize. So that. I was that's, just letting yeah. you know that. So that's, that's what you cool. want to tell people and they start doing yeah. that. You know, that's how we do it. You know, you that, that's that's amazing. And uh, as many pages you can get your hands on, that's the main thing. Between me and Nathan, we probably have somewhere 35, 40 pages. Wow. And when those pages go to work, that's how, like, for his episode, you get 1,000 views on it. Nice. Because you have all those pages crossing over each other, cross-posting. Yeah. We, we can beat the Facebook thing if we keep our minds to it, I can promise you. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing. Okay, so with the pandemic, you know, everything's been, uh, it's been knocked out. And we've seen the devastation in our in our venues, John. Uh, if you remember, we were talking once about that Texas music office. Sure. You know, we, we got all the way up there. We were almost there. And then the pandemic was another thing that pretty much, you know, took the, the wind out of those cells. But I want to tell you on here, I did talk to Lisa. Nice. Over the thing, so she is yes. aware about it. But I, I think as soon as somehow we can get Austin back to music. It's, it's pretty, have you been to Austin lately? At all? I, I've been to the music store, but I haven't okay. been much beyond it. Uh, unfortunately, oh. I had a regular uh, gig at the Driscoll hotel in Austin, you know, right there on six and Brazos. And, uh, the guy said that he thinks that soon they may be able to restart having live music again there. But, but right now he, uh, he's, you know, he's saying he, always sends me these monthly updates but but that was a regular gig for me that that no longer is there and i was doing central market as well and uh so anyway but uh, but uh, austin in because it's the live music capital of the world i think there's going to be enough people supporting it that they'll bounce back you know so i'm i'm really hopeful i could we could only pray that they're going to bounce back you know yeah. i just um uh, because i do so much within social media for what my niche is right yeah uh, I get to see a lot of stuff and like up in Fort Worth, there's this group and I won't say the group name. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just not right now. Sure. But uh, I'll tell you the guy's name is Chris Poloni and uh, they, you know, all these venues up in the Fort Worth, Arlington, and Dallas area, they've been wiped out, man. We, we haven't seen it. They, they have like armies of TABC that descend upon their venues down there. I mean, up there, you know, we're in Marble Falls or, yeah. Memphis. and uh, it's wild. They have thousands of members now. It's one of the biggest moves. I'm, I'm, state legislation is taking notice of the group because there's so many people in it, and it's, and it's all bar owners. So if you get a chance, check that guy out. Sure. You know, don't join the group or whatever you want to do, but go in there and look, and you can say, "My God, all these venues and they're they're battling for their lives." You know, you can't you can't pay your lease, you can't pay your mortgages, you can't pay your employees, you lose your health coverage. It is just when it's down. It's been it's been a hard thing. Okay, so uh, enough of. Uh, me asking the questions about you know the uh, apply to the venues well no problem at all you know uh but speaking of the the pandemic my wife and i uh before everything uh went really really went south she and i were on our uh, uh belated uh anniversary getaway uh so, and again i do a lot of bartering and uh so uh, I had bartered uh, a, a stay at a bed and breakfast as part of my pay 
and I took my wife uh, a, a couple of weeks after our, our anniversaries in February, but we went the first part of March, and uh, so things were still open at that point. And I noticed that my wife wasn't wearing the brand new ring that I had purchased for her, and instead she was wearing the old ring that that I had gotten for her when I didn't have much money. And so anyway, uh, in fact, there's a pawn shop uh, that used to be over uh, on 281 and f- and 1431, and it was called uh, Lakeside Pawn. Lakeside Pawn Jewelry. And that was the original uh, Lakeside before it moved further uh, further north. And uh, but anyway, I, I can't remember if it was at that location or if they had already just moved to this lo- to the location. Uh, uh, closer toward uh, Walmart, but but in any case, I had pawned my most valuable guitar uh, and in order to get my wife uh, a wedding ring, and that's what this song's about. Okay, so hey, we're going to check out another tune from John Arthur Martinez, Once Upon a Pawn Shop Ring. This next song is called Once Upon a Pawn Shop Ring. man behind the counter gladly took my fine guitar. He offered to Ben Franklin's as he chewed on his cigar. It was my prized possession, the most expensive thing. I sold my handmade washburn for her pawn shop wedding ring. Once upon a pawn shop ring, our love was shared aloud. The symbol of eternity, once someone's broken vow. But God can work His miracles in every little thing. He works in the strangest ways once upon a pawn shop ring. On our anniversary, I bought a brand new band Never worn by any woman, never sold to any man She whispered as she opened the small box from the store Our old pawn shop wedding ring still means so much more. Once upon a pawn shop ring, our love was shared aloud. The symbol of eternity, once someone's broken vow. But God can work His miracles through every little thing. He works in the strangest ways once upon a pawn shop ring. God works in the strangest ways once upon a pawn shop ring. All right, and we're back with John Arthur Martinez on Society Network. John, that that song "Once Upon a Pawn Shop Ring" is uh, pretty amazing, especially since you got that ring at Lakeside Pawn and, and Jewelry. So, you know, uh, thank you for that uh, pitch for the. Well, Lakeside. that was the guitar that I had pawned was a uh, a handmade George Washburn guitar. So uh, nowadays, the Washburns, I think a lot of them are mass manufactured, probably somewhere. 
uh, over, overseas. But this was one of the original George Washburn handmade guitars. And uh, so I thought, you know, hey, I, I don't need, I got a, my regular guitars, my Takamini, I, I still have that. I'm going to pawn this extra guitar and, and get my wife the string. Well, how she responded uh, was our old pawn shop wedding ring still means so much more. And that's the line that became the chorus in the song that you just heard. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I think it's an awesome, anything has to do with, you know, love, you know. So, but you, you, before the song, you were talking about she had that ring on. What was her reason for her wearing that ring? Was it because that was the original ring you got her and it was like that special bond or something like that? Well, exactly. She she felt uh, a connection to the original ring that I had purchased for her. And and uh, and she likes the she liked the newer wedding ring. In fact, I got the newer one from one of the local jewel jewelers, and it was you know handmade by the local jeweler. But she preferred that old pawn shop wedding ring. That's wild, so, man. Yeah. That, that's wild. I, I, I met your wife. She's a very nice lady. So, uh, but I, uh, you know, uh, I haven't seen uh, your son, stepson running around the county here lately. Of lately. Well, he got married. Uh, well, that ends that real fast. Well, and he's running now uh, in those back hills over there. You know where Horseshoe Bay uh, South is? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, he runs back through there, and there's trails all through there now. And uh, so he's still in, he's still fit as a fiddle. Man, yeah. you know, I, I, I got to give him some props, man, because yeah. uh, for the, almost the entire time I've lived up here, we call him the running man is what we call him. Everybody yeah. in town in the county there is like running man because there he goes. You'll see him off of 2147, then you'll see him north of Marlboro Falls somewheres, you know. Well, I don't think uh, he would mind me saying this, but there are people who uh, uh, who use exercise to to uh, to stay sane, and that was that was his way of staying sane, you know, because uh, like my dad had a had a, an addiction to to uh, to alcohol. And, uh, you know, and, and rather than, than, uh, than rely on, uh, those kind of crutches, Ryan's crutch would be just to be as fit as possible. And yeah. that, and that was those endorphins, they say, uh, re, uh, that you get from running are similar to the endorphins people get from, from being on drugs or, uh, so, uh, you know, that was his, his way of staying sane. Yeah, it, dude, it, it, it's amazing. And I'm gonna tell you, it yeah. is not a joke that, that, uh, uh, gentleman loves to run yeah born forrest gump i'll tell you that and i don't mean that as a pun at all i yeah. mean straight up we've seen him everywhere so that, that, that's a good thing so uh where does john plan to go moving forward well this next year uh i've got commitments to do an album uh i'm going to produce one for pauline reese and i'm going to let her uh come on the show and tell you more about what she wants to do and i'm I'm going to allow her to be the one to to uh, to give you the details. Some of the details of the album that she wants to do are pretty are pretty exciting. The last one included Willie. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, oh, Willie. Yeah. Uh, she and Willie did a song together, um, but she's got a lot of friends, and I think she'd like to include as many of them as possible on this next album. So I'm excited about that. There's a, a young fellow that you may or may not know named Cade Mauer. I, I, I heard the name. And Cade is just a phenomenal uh, vocalist and a phenomenal uh, Texas artist. And so uh, I've committed to doing an album with Cade as well. And then, of course, I'm going to be working on my own album. And uh, and then there's a singer-songwriter uh, out of uh, uh, but that's on the East Coast. And he's asked me to start... Uh, demoing his almost his entire catalog so i've got a lot of uh things to do recording wise so until things pick up completely you know i'm gonna have some work at least in the studio the recording studio and that's the reason i'm doing the upgrades right now okay okay yeah. so you have you have a studio in your house yes okay okay is this studio similar to this or it's like well it is the uh, willie nelson suite down at your, at your well, house well it's not quite will, the budget that Willie had. <laughs> I mean, when you're Willie Nelson and you've had uh, how many countless, uh, I think he's done what, 50 or 60 albums. Oh, Lord. You know, he's had how many uh, songs on the charts when he was uh, a younger man, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50. You know, how many duets has he done with all, you know, when you have that kind of uh, uh, 
impact on the music industry. That's that's world class studio. I did part of uh, my Purgatory Road album at Willie Studio, and that was such an exciting thing for me. And I'd done a bunch of other things before, demos and such uh, at uh, Perdinalis. But no, mine is is not quite there, and it's not quite uh, somebody's uh, uh, a studio in their garage. It's somewhere in between. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it works. You know, it, you have it in your house. Yeah. You know, uh, for a vast majority of most musicians, they just don't have that. And you're able to put out uh, obviously quality from your right there in your home studio. Well, there's there's a, the magic is uh, you know singing with passion. Uh, a song that actually has uh, some merit and some value, and and a song that is that comes from the heart or comes from the soul, you know. There's uh, those when you have there's this old joke that you know you can't polish a turd, right? You know you yeah. got to have something to polish, and so if if you start there, and that's the same thing I told Kate. I said, Kate, once we get the material, then the rest of the thing, everything's going to fall in place. So. We just need to make sure that that we have the right songs selected, and uh, so. Uh, but that said, that album that I recorded, uh, uh, Purgatory Road, it's been probably my second most uh, requested album, uh, and the most requested album uh, uh, is called Lone Starry Night, and it was the album that I released on an independent label called Dual Tone Records, and. Dual Tone Records, uh, uh, they're based out of Nashville, but uh, they were two guys from Texas that had done the label, and uh, they love this song that I'm about to do, and it's probably one of the most requested songs. Even when I go to Europe, you'll be surprised. Somebody will come up, and I think they're going to request uh, Kenny Chesney, and, and instead, they're requesting one of my original songs off Lone Starry Night, and this one is called The Armadillo Song, which I co-wrote with my buddy Mike Blakely. That's right. Here we go. Jonathan Martinez, Society Network, Armadillo Song. All right, you can sing along with this next song, the Armadillo Song. Well, there's a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle near the cattle garden. June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle and the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road I am traveling on. And there's a red headed rider with a radio rearing and the windows down, rocking and a reeling to the rhythm of the country sound. Got his 18 wheeler with his pedal to the metal, headed for the dillo and the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right sedilla in the middle, swerved the left just a puddle in the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. I dive for the bar ditch, what do I see? Big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. And an old brown bottle in a puddle in the cattle guard. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle and a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. I am traveling on. That's all there is to it. Y'all sing along. Here's that sing-along part now. Big on my little in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle in the cattle guard. And a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle of the big on my little in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. A red hit a rider with a radio rearing the windows down. Rocking and reading the rhythm of the country sounds. Got his 18 wheeler with his pedal to the middle and he's headed for the little in the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right, but still in the middle. He swerved the left, still in the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. Dire of the bar ditch, what do I see? Big on my little in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in the puddle of the cattle guard. Hold on. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle of the big on my little in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. <laughs> All right, we're back. Jonathan Martinez in the Armadillo song. Did y'all get that? There were uh, 73 examples of alliteration in the song. You remember alliteration, right? That's the repetition of the beginning consonant. Sounds like baby buggy bumper. There's a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. A no brown bottle and a puddle near the cattle guard. All those repetition of those sounds. Mike Blakely and I just did that as a joke one time, driving home from Nashville. 
But anyway, I hope you like that. And you, you guys out there listening, I, next time I see you, I expect you to have that song memorized. <laughs> there, there we go. And you, you, you know, uh, great job. Great job, John, on uh, Auburn Dillon's song. And you mentioned Mike Blakely. Yes. You know, didn't y'all come up to like a 50-year anniversary of Not jamming quite. together or something? Not quite. That would have put me at age eight and a half uh, as, as it started. <laughs> but, we, but we have been playing uh, since the 1900s. Uh, it was 1987 when we first started uh, collaborating. That's yeah. that, you know that's that's amazing. A lot of musical friendships. You know, a lot of people I know they've been jamming with the same people almost their entire lives. You know, I play with the same original drummer that I started playing with when you know when I first 25 years ago. But okay, so that's an amazing thing. So John, uh, uh, if you could give anybody some advice uh, about their struggle in music right now, uh, what, what would you tell anybody if you were gonna just so here's here's my pitch on it. You know, I just had this discussion uh, over the weekend with Cade Mauer. I told you I'm going to be doing an album with Cade Mauer. I told Cade, you know, every aspect of the music business, every aspect of music performance, every aspect of songwriting, every aspect of promoting and you know using social media you just need to be the as as good as you possibly can be at every at every one of those things and uh including your ability to perform the song uh by yourself or your ability to perform the song in an ensemble so whatever you're doing so uh let me give you an example uh, when you're doing a live show uh you need really good equipment and you need uh, it doesn't have to be the most expensive equipment, but it needs to be good sounding equipment. And you need to ho- know how to use that equipment. And, you know, the gain structure, you don't want the the, the volume to be, uh, the, the master volume to be uh, set so low. And then your your fader volume set so high that, that it's hard, that when you make one tiny maneuver on the master, everything explodes because it hurts people's ears. So you don't ever want to play too too loud uh, louder than the venue would require because then you'll never get it you'll you'll never get asked back if if the management has to come tell you hey could you guys turn that thing down you know you've already uh, created a, a, a an adversarial relationship with the people that are paying you you know so uh you know those are things that i've learned you know you gotta you gotta sound good and you gotta perform well you know, and when you, you got to know your songs and know your material. And if you make a mistake, own up to it and, and don't pretend that, that you're, that you're, uh, you know, that, that it didn't happen. You know, everybody makes mistakes. I've, I've seen superstars make mistakes, uh, on huge stages. So that's going to be part of it. But, but the fact that you're giving everything you've got, uh, from the performance and then, you know, and, and it, let's say you're doing a three or four hour show. Well, don't take a 45-minute break between the first and the second mm-hmm. set. And the owner's like, where's the band? I, you know, you know, you know. so I always tell everybody, hey, I'll be right back in about 12 to 14 minutes. And we usually are. You know? and, if, and, let me t- and let me tell you, if somebody in the band hadn't made it back in time because they're backstage doing something, uh, I start anyway. Yeah. I don't wait on them. And then I make a joke out of it. Everybody, welcome to the stage, Mr. Kurt Bomber. On the, <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, I, we've all been through that where yeah. somebody uh, made it back to the stage late. So you just got to do every component as, as good as you possibly can to, to make a look. Because this is a hard business. Yeah. It, it, it is a brutal business. That's why I'm doing yeah. this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being on, on this side of the microphone because, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard. Focus and consistency. Yep. That's what I tell everybody. Stay focused, stay consistent with what you do, uh, and be professional at all times. Exactly. And don't burn your bridges. Don't burn your bridges, people. So, okay. So, John, we're winding down here real quick. Okay. Uh, so, this is Mel Highsmith, John Arthur Martinez, Episode 5, Society Networks, Home Going After Dark. And we'll see you next time. All right. You can sing along with this next song, the Armadillo song. <laughs> Well, there's a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road An old brown bottle in a puddle near the cattle garden 
June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle and the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road I am traveling on. And there's a red-headed rider with a radio rare and the windows down. Rocking and a reeling to the rhythm of the country sound. Got his 18 wheeler with pedal to the metal. Headed for the dillo and the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right to the in the middle. Swerved the left to the puddle of the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. I dive for the bar ditch. What do I see? Big on my dillo in the middle of a little old country road. And an old brown bottle in a puddle of the cattle guard. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle and a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. I am traveling on. That's all there is to it. Y'all sing along. Here's that sing along part now. Big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle in the cattle garden. And a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottom of the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. A red hit rider with a radio wearing the windows down. Rocking and reading the rhythm of the country sounds. Got his 18 wheel with pedal to the middle and he's headed for the dillo in the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right still in the middle. He swerved the left puddle in the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. Dire of the bar ditch, what do I see? Big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in the puddle in the cattle guard. Hold on. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle of the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. All right, you can sing along with this next song, the Armadillo song. Well, there's a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle near the cattle garden. A June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle near the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. I am traveling on. And there's a red hit rider with a radio rare and the windows down. Rocking and a reeling to the rhythm of the country sound. Got his 18 wheeler with pedal to the metal. Headed for the dillo and the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right to the dillo in the middle. Swerved to the left to the puddle of the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. I dive for the bar ditch, what do I see? Big on my dillo in the middle of a little old country road. And an old brown bottle in a puddle in the cattle guard. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle and a big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. I am traveling on. That's all there is to it. Y'all sing along. Here's that sing along part now. Big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in a puddle in the cattle garden. And a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle of the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. A red hit rider with a radio wearing the windows down. Rocking and reading the rhythm of the country sounds. Got his 18 wheel with pedal to the middle and he's headed for the dillo in the bottle in the middle of a little old country road I'm traveling on. Well, he swerved the right still in the middle. He swerved the left puddle in the guard. Next thing you know, he's coming at me. Dire of the bar ditch, what do I see? Big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road. An old brown bottle in the puddle of the cattle guard. Hold on. There's a June bug beetle in the bottom of the bottle of the big armadillo in the middle of a little old country road that I am traveling on. Mm -hmm. 